such an asshole. So this request is brought to you by Achieving Financial Excellence, my course offered through Teachable, which is your very first stop in putting your financial act and getting your financial life together. I'm not trying to do the late night jazz voice. My voice is just completely shot. Maybe I should move this in closer. There we go. Hello, my baby. Let's go make love. Or the, the, the Barry White song that he sang. <clears throat> Dear Cappy, I'll try to be succinct. My view of the problem, actually, particularly in the West, is what I call the BS wall. Social media, academia, education, advertising, both the legacy and alternative media, fake gurus, various shades of people, lying employers, manipulate government statistics and political movements, BLM, feminism, identity, left, right, wing, politics, green politics, etc. An enormous, endless wall composed in the majority of lies, hidden agenda, misinformation, and false data. Correct. True. I agree with your premise. <clears throat> The problem is that this garbage in means garbage out in terms of decisions and long-term life choices. It could take years of precious time to sift out, discern the relevant facts from within the BS wall. The damage can often be irreparable. Here's some ways I have and have used to do so, but I would appreciate any extension to the list, including any intellectual tools that can help myself and your viewers. Can you please comment on and extend the list? I have to add one more. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. So your list. This is how you this is how you sift through the BS. Self-awareness, emotionally unattached logic, and the scientific method. Yes. That's how I became a, a not leftist, basically. I'm a libertarian, but I'm not a leftist. Because the data is the same way um Thomas Sowell became it. You're like, well, well, you were a communist, what made you change? It's like the data. I remember saying early on, I'm like, I don't have a political opinion. I go look at the data and the facts and then I form a conclusion. Ooh. That that was a that was a truth bomb at the house parties in my 20s. That didn't get my peen touched. Working in an industry to see under the bonnet. Yes, also my experience, the financial sector is corrupt. You worked as a financial analyst, which gave you insight into personal finances. Any roles you would recommend? <clears throat> well, I don't recommend anyone go work in banking. You're you're not gonna work. You're gonna you're going to be working for a charity, either through direct government bailouts for the large corporations or the small companies that just like run nonprofit charities for the inept and the, the insolvent and the bankrupt. You're like hey, small business owners, small businesses are the backbone of America. No, they're really not. They're really not. They're a net parasitic class. Um, <clears throat> I would to see under the bonnet. You want to see it like, well, I guess you could work in if you want to see how sausage is made. Yeah, go work. I don't know, intern for a congressman, go, I don't know, work as a cop, um, work at a non profit. That'd be a good one. Go work at a non profit or a school, see how little the kids really want to be there, see how little anyone cares about the children or the minorities or the poor or the hungry. Um, Oh, work in academia? Yeah, I guess you could part-time. I want to make it your life. But if, if along your route to your main profession, you have the opportunity. Like when I taught, oh, God, that was such an experience teaching college. I'll pass them all anyway so we can get their money. That was it. That was it. Still remember the guy's name. I remember you, buddy. Hey, I remember you. You got a unique name and a face. You're easy to look up. I remember you. Oh, yeah. I hate to say it though, he was right. In the end, he was right to lie to these kids and take all their money. So I can't. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Those kids were scumbags. They're sanctimonious, arrogant little kids from the burbs who thought they were so intelligent but couldn't get into real school. You were right to take their money. And I'm like, oh, he just did Operation Evil. He was just before my time. Pilot testing, a constant example, 20 dates or 20 job interviews. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's, I, I would use that more for entrepreneurship, not exactly sussing out whether life is trying to screw me over or not. But yeah, I mean, you don't, well, one, you don't get married, but two, you, you, you court a girl for years before you commit. Um, 
four, you often use BLS data for jobs. Any other general sources for viewers? Uh, OECD, St. Louis Fed, uh, the FRED database at the St. Louis Federal Reserve, International Labor Organization, ILO.org, Bureau of Economic Analysis. But even there, your data is corrupt. They keep changing the methodology. I Honestly, I go shadow stats, shadowstats.com or .org. I'm not sure. Good instinct and intuition could be helpful. Yes. The numbers don't lie, i.e. looking at the profitability of business via accounting or looking at the productivity of your health stats. Yes. Yes, that's all I did as an underwriter is I looked at numbers. And then the banker's like, well, isn't there a way? No. There isn't, you fat, overweight boomer F. But let me guess, we're going to prove it anyway. Seven, having personally curated list of information sources analysts authors online or otherwise and disregarding the rest um yeah i suppose so um i don't i always did data and i always liked data because i could look it up point to it but then people you you just you just want to have a hatred for humanity like here's the data you're wrong and then they go and try and question it and argue with you and why it isn't. And like, well, it's just my truth. It's like, okay, you see, you just, it, you're insistent on advocating a belief that is detrimental to society and me. So you don't have to work essentially. Okay, that's fine. So I, I don't, I guess you could throw in there, you know, don't argue with people. Um, you, you could have curated, curated list of information sources you could yeah you know, I'll, I'll trust thomas Sowell before i trust the the gremlin oh it's the new york gremlin um he's a worm from lord of the rings why can't i remember him paul krugman but paul knows exactly what he's doing he, he knows he's lying he, you can't be that you can't be that smart and that dense at this he's smart he knows exactly what he's doing <clears throat> um and otherwise disregarding the rest yeah i would I would imagine he here's another thing. Believe your eyes that that by now with all the data, like you could find any data you want to prove whatever you want. There's a study out there for it, especially after what 50 years of academic liberal arts, social science major to just prove whatever people wanted. And there's a validity crisis where, you know, a third of these studies can be repeated. So there's no validity validity. This is particularly psychology, but the social sciences and liberal arts as well. Um, so I just believe your eyes logic. Like if this doesn't smell the BS, the past the BS test, it's a lie. Uh, PS, I read your book of numbers. The methodology was imperfect, but I think you get the point. Well, I, I'm very curious. What, what, what would you have changed about the methodology? I, I, I am, I'm curious. I mean, admittedly, it was um, I, right up front. I said it's a ballpark figure, but I'm very curious how you would change the formula. I, I would love to have you email me back and, and tell me what, what you would do differently. Um, return client military discount. Okay, so I did come up with a couple others here. Um, and this is one that just is true, especially in America today. Anything that sounds good is a lie. And if it sucks or requires work, it's the truth. That's it. If you don't want to hear it, it's the truth. If it sounds good, it's a lie. You know, the really hot girl that was hitting on me in Wyoming at a bar one time. I'm like, I, I mean, I knew I just knew something was wrong. And it was people were trying to play a joke on me. Um, you know, uh, if it sounds good. Oh, it's not that you majored in sociology, little Susie. It's it's the patriarchy. That's why you don't make as much as many. Yeah, that's a lie. Hey, you had more kids than you could afford, and now you get to work twice as much as you would have otherwise, and you majored in something stupid, so you get to go back to college while raising your illegitimate kid that your baby mama or baby daddy dropped out on you. And then hopefully by the time the kid's 14 or 15 and you got your degree in accounting, you can salvage the remaining half of your life. That's the truth. Um, <clears throat> everyone is lazy, is lazy, including your not Democrat friends. It is the smart people who figure out working is easier than trying to avoid work. Um, this one I, I found out two to three years ago. I don't care if there's an R in front of you, if you're an R or a D or an L. 
nearly everyone everyone is lazy it's whether people are smart enough to figure out well lazy people work twice as hard and i've had friends that i've gotten rid of because they are lazy so the matter there's an r and l in front of their name turned out they were hypocrites and so um yeah, most, 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 I just, most people are scum. I don't care who they are politically aligned to what they say. Most people are scum. And you'll never really find that out with the majority of your friends uh, as you get older. Um, everyone has an incentive to interact with you. You need to find out what it is and whether it's malicious or for mutually beneficial purposes. Why is someone being nice to me? Some people could genuinely be nice to you because they enjoy your company and they're being friendly and they want a social life, but they want a social life that is mutually beneficial to you. Why is someone being really nice? Like I was at a cafe one time in Vegas. The guy just starts coming up to me, talk to me because I had a cowboy bebop um, back sticker on my, my laptop. And he starts talking and talking. I'm like, dude, I'm busy. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry, dude. And he was like some crypto bro at a convention probably wanted to sell me on some kind of trade or service or something like that. Um, most people, when they're interacting with you, your teachers, for example, are there for a financial profit motive, your professors. Your employer only hires you because they want to make money off of you, which is honest at least. Um, but why is that girl treating you real nice? Why does she want? Why does she want you to slide into her DMs? Hey, go to this website and subscribe to my channel. Oh, there's an ulterior motive. Very, I mean, this is why friends are the greatest thing ever, because there's no ulterior motive. But usually, people have an, an ulterior motive or, or a motive, and you need to figure that out why they're interacting with you. Um, if people can't explain it to you so that it makes sense, it's a lie. This is how a lot of dot coms got financed. We understand this is too complicated for you finance guys at Wall Street. And that just was the most perfect thing to say to these arrogant, solidly 112, 113 IQ people on Wall Street. But, but I work at Goldman Sachs. I'll show you we'll finance it all. <clears throat> um, that was the dot coms trying to sell technology. Um, more recently, someone wanted me to look at metaphysics. Some guy claims to have figured out metaphysics and I went to his website and tried to read it. I'm like, none of this is making any sense. Like it was literal pablum, literal pablum. Like what, what, what is this? Give me your thesis. If they can't explain it to you, it's because they're trying to screw you over. So if it doesn't make sense, you're, they're screwing you over. Um, and then there's a good one. Never attribute. Uh, something to malice that can be explained by stupidity. I found that to be very true. Now, some people are just malicious, more modernly with leftists just being jealous of other people who worked harder than them and worked more. There's malice there. But, um, pe man, there's a lot of stupid people in the world. They're really stupid, which you... Stupid is not a choice. Some people might argue it is, but, like, someone's driving slow, on the road, they're not driving slow because they're malicious and trying to piss you off. They're they're truly a freaking moron from Nebraska who doesn't know that the speed limit goes to 65. And so you'll get yourself in a lot of trouble, not not getting violent, but yelling and screaming and road raging and getting in front of, you know, just, just you got to accept they're stupid. Oh, my God. So I graduated with my journalism degree. I can't put so now I'm going to go to law school. Don't get angry at that person. It's a stupid person. Oh, boy, have you thought? No, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to save the planet. All right, all right, never mind. Go to law school. Um, And that's about it. Those are the rules that I kind of knew. But, yeah, it's a pretty good good set of rules you got there. Pretty good litmus tests. Just send me another one. The world's out to screw you over. That's it. There's very few people that are there to help you out. No one's coming to save you. You could just assume everyone in the country is your enemy or is there to screw you over. I mean, they won't kill you, but they got an ulterior motive for you. So you got it. You're like, okay, what's going on? Are any super chats? What's up, Muxaxa? Uh, um, who's FBS? 
uh yeah seven yeah there you go man is it malicious or stupid stupid all right that's it we'll see you guys later toodles